Hi, my name is Seth Meshko. I'm a 3D artist, and this is a demo reel piece featuring a script that I wrote for rigging a humanoid character in Maya. Uh, this character will be animated here in Maya, and um, the rig is optimized for exporting to Unity. Okay. Um, this script is not yet available for download. Um, it will be in the near future, so if you're um, looking for that, just uh, um, subscribe to my channel and I will give you updates on that. Okay? Um, so here we've got this window. Um, I, uh, you just enter in the name of the character, define the character, and then you get the HIK system up there um, defined, and then you create the rig, okay? So there's a skeleton already in the scene. The, the character is skinned to the skeleton, and then um, the character rig is set up on top of that skeletal system, all right? Um, it is an HIK system, and um, so it does have all of the functionality of the HIK system as well, um, including FK and, um, you know, mocap uh, connections and stuff. But um, I'm just going to be showing you this, which is this rig that is... Um, basically kind of on top of that HIK system. So there was the global transforms from the feet, and then here's the global transform um, from the center of mass. Okay, so this would be for flips. The other um, would be for um, locking and running and stuff. All right, so here's the hips. Um, translation, rotation. Here is a spine bend control that distributes the um, curvature across the entire spine. Um, here is the upper torso, and uh, you can see at this point that um, the upper torso is um, a parent, uh, a child of the hips. Okay, so that can be turned off. All right, so we can just uh, turn off this rig follow, and now the um, upper torso is no longer um, uh a child of that of that hip okay um all of the controls in this uh system have that ability they can either be a part of the um of the rig or uh, and move in in tandem with it or they can kind of operate on their own okay so we had head there we had shoulder transform um and then here's the wrist now you'll see that the elbow is following the uh angle of the wrist i like that i find that that is uh commonly what i'm looking for but it's not necessary you can move that pole vector uh constraint around um independently um and then you can also turn its follow off so it no longer follows uh the wrist and then um, you can turn off its effect completely and actually animate from the shoulder um, to get the angle of the elbow. All right. Um, let's move on down to the feet here. Um, and actually, uh, let's let's show you the this control first. So this is this. Um, Global foot control it controls both of the feet at the same time um, for, you know, possibly sliding down a hill or, you know, skateboard, something like that. Um, and then here are the individual foot controls. So you can move the foot around in space. Um, uh, here is the um, foot roll system. Okay, so for just, you know, standard walking sequences. And then this is unique. This is this aim um, control system that allows you to pivot from anywhere in the foot. So you can pivot from the toe, you can pivot from the heel, you can um, pivot from the ball, okay? And then you can switch pivots. So you could switch from the heel to the toe to the ball and still have the foot roll and all of the other controls sort of work in tandem with that control. Uh, I think that's pretty unique. Um, I've seen a lot of hacky animation where um, you know, people sort of fake uh, multiple pivot points in the foot. Um, so anyway, I just, I think that that's pretty cool, unique uh, thing that I came up with. Okay, so moving on to the hand. So we've got that global control um, that I just showed that curls all the fingers and spreads all the fingers simultaneously. And then you've got individual control over the spread and um, curl of each finger. Here is this FK system that allows you to go in and dial out um, each individual knuckle, all right? And then that works in tandem with the um, the driven control system. So those two systems sort of work together to get um,
a lot of control out of hand, okay? So um, I'm just going to go ahead and bring up the uh, IK system now. So there's an IK system in the hand. Um, you just uh, turn on the visibility and now you've got this sort of global um, control that has all of the individual fingers also parented underneath it, okay? We will blend up the IK um, control and blend down the FK control. And now we've got our fingers following the IK system, okay? Um, so if you were to have, you know, a, a tabletop, for instance, or some sort of surface that you wanted the fingers to glide along, this is how you would do it. All right, so moving on, let's get uh, into the facial controls. Um, this is the most sort of recent addition to this rig. Now you can see that there's all these shapes um, that are kind of up on the face. And that's for like individual discrete control over the individual um, joints. Um, I'm gonna turn that off for now. It's just kind of hard to look at. And for the most part, I don't think I'll ever need to use it. Um, it's there for doing very discrete control, but um, you know, uh, you're, we're going to get most of it out of this sort of mask that we've got going on over here. Um, so these shapes all control um, their sort of, you know, uh, facial component. Um, I'm just going to kind of go down the, the, the face um, control by control and, and show you, you know, most of them. Um, so we've got, you know, blink and individual uh, control over the um, eyelids. Okay. Um, I'm, I'll just go ahead and kind of like make a facial expression here. We'll just kind of like have a, maybe a look of semi disgust going on here. All right. So um, here we've got the cheeks. We're just going to kind of like pinch those up a little bit. Um, so the upper cheeks are going to come up rising up into the eyes and then we'll just kind of drop the lower cheek a little bit um kind of lengthening the face just a little bit here we've got some pinch controls for the nose so um you can kind of you know squish those in a little bit um i don't think i showed the eyes here's the eyes um you can aim them with this control you can also aim them with this control so um this control would be you know potentially parented to something so that it, you know, the eyes followed something, um, what have you. But uh, just to illustrate that there's two ways to control the, the eyes, okay? Um, moving on down, uh, we'll just kind of like curl the lip a little bit here, um, get the kind of sneer going here, um, a little asymmetry in the mouth, um, the the edges of the lips all right we've got a, a little chin here all right and then um we can just kind of like drop the jaw a little bit or or what have you and then um the jaw has two controls okay so one that kind of controls the transform and the other that controls the rotation okay and they're kind of um a two-part system there now this is really cool. The, the, each one of these larger shapes has uh, like the ability to def make these major deformations in the face. So you can get this sort of squash and stretch quality to the face by, by moving these larger shapes around. And um, this just really livens up the face a lot. Um, I, uh, when, before when I was just creating uh, you know, these rig shapes without these controls, my faces look really sort of static, um, but this just really makes them very elastic and alive. Um, so uh, I was really um, pleased when I, when I wrote that. All right, that's about it for this demo. Thanks for watching. If you want to get a hold of me, I am Seth Meshko at pretty much whatever social media platform you want to use. If you want to see more of my work, go to 3danimationartist.com. You can find more of my Maya Python scripts on my GitHub page, including the script for the hand rig um, that was featured in this demo. Uh, if you want to see this asset at work in a game engine, uh, go to revoltingproductions.com. There is a PC download and a web player that features this character as a 3D platform character asset. Um, and the rig in this video was used to create the animation for that character, exported to Unity, and then um, was uh, the behavior was coded in Unity. All right. Okay. Uh, again, thanks for watching, and 
subscribe to this channel to get more updates on what I'm up to. Thanks. Bye-bye.